What's going on you guys? My name's Kirby. Check out this awesome Nintendo Switch arcade box I made. I'm going to be going through how I made it and hopefully it inspires you to make other awesome cool things for your Nintendo Switch. So in order to start this project I needed to get this into SolidWorks. That's actually very simple. As I only need the actual screen part, I just need to remove the joy cons. And now I've got the part that will basically go inside the arcade box. Then use a vernier caliper to measure it accurately and then use those dimensions to create the body in solid. You don't need to worry about making all the details on the top of the switch accurate. All you need to worry about is what is important, which is the charging port, the little speakers and the screen and the width and the height. Once I had those dimensions, I input them into SolidWorks and used this to create the dummy switch screen I used to then create the arcade box around. I'm designing this in SolidWorks, which is the sponsor for this video. It's a great software that I really, really enjoy using. From there, I needed to test that my measurements were correct. So around that body, I built a little prototype box. This is the first stage. This is to ensure that the dummy switch that I made in SolidWorks is the same dimensions as the actual switch screen. So by doing a quick little prototype and printing it out, it's much quicker than just getting carried away with the whole design process and realizing it's wrong, having to go back. I then brought the STL into Slicer Prusa's edition. I used their feature to click on a flat face and orientate in the correct direction that I wanted it to be. Turn on the support so that I can bridge that top area. And then slice it to get a good idea of what it's going to look like. The yellow is the actual model and the green is the support material. This is needed to bridge that gap. I then save the G-code, which then gets sent to the printer. This is printed on my Prusa MK2S in a rigid ink natural PLA. There was a little jump over there because the Octoprint software freaked out a little bit. And this basically allows me to slot that in there and see that everything lines up well, which it does. Next. You jump into the next stage of the design that's creating the actual switch box using the prototype that i created already most of the work was done already it was just about creating the shape and the design that we wanted let's have a look at how that went so starting off with the prototype box that i had already created i don't need to recreate that so i just designed the arcade box around that start off by creating the general shape and then putting it all together all of the features that I used here were basic extrude boss features and extrude cut features. There is nothing fancy that's going on here. A couple of fillets here and there. And a little bit of shaping. If you have a basic understanding of, of SolidWorks and 3D design, this is a very, very easy object to make. And then I ended off with a render. This was then printed using Rigid Ink PLA on my Prusa MK3S. So these were the final four pieces which make up the switch box. You've got the right hand panel which I printed in red. The back panel which was printed in black PLA. This one failed a few times as I was trying to get the settings right in that. But that's part of the process. The left panel was printed in a really nice blue, also rigid ink PLA. And then the big medalla, the main center console, that took a good 48 hours to print. Very, very cool print, but very, very long. Glad I didn't have to print that one twice. So to put it together, I just used a bit of hot glue on the inside, just kind of bonding the two surfaces, nothing too permanent and nothing too fancy. All you do is you just put a bit of hot glue 
onto some intersecting edges and it should hold fine. So after long hours of printing, long hours of waiting, a few fails, we have the switch box with a backplate that pops out so that you can plug in and run your cables. Um, I'm not a big fan of this. I probably should have designed it so that it could slide in, but that's the beauty of this is that I can just change my iterations and just change my designs and quickly design until I'm finally fully happy with what I want. And then the switch screen just slides in like that. Put the back plate on and we are ready to play. So the really good thing about this is that there's a lot of room for customization and personalization. For example, on the sides, you can put these in any color that you want uh, to match your Joy-Cons. You can add logos or branding here. Same thing with the front here. There is just so much blank space here to create your own and make it your own design. And that can be very, very easily done. So with E3 starting real soon, uh, it'll be really exciting to see what Nintendo comes out with new with the Switch and what other fun things that they've got planned with Nintendo Switch but this is something I've been wanting to create for a long time make a unique bundle of arcade box where I can store my Switch and with the ease of access to 3D printing and design software these days it is just so easy to create the crazy wild ideas that you come up with and this is one of them the, the, the main limitation I found with the 3D printing is that I couldn't get an exact match to the colors for the Joy-Cons you are quite limited to the colors that you can get so shop around see what materials is best to match for you and if not you can always paint it this was a very fun and quick little design project it took just over an hour to create using very very basic features and a bit of reverse engineering having a pair of calipers access to CAD software you can create anything for anything and having access to these tools allows my imagination to be limitless I hope you learned a lot from this, I hope you got inspired by this, and I hope you really enjoyed my video. Don't forget to create to inspire. We'll see you guys in the next one. I really hope you don't hear that music because that's going to cause problems. Interesting fact about the Nintendo Switch cartridges is that there's a special chemical over the plastic that tastes really disgusting when you taste it, preventing kids from putting them in their mouth and swallowing them. Oh god. <laughs>